Welcome to the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, where you get multifamily investing made real. Learn from top players in the real estate investment world as they share their secrets with you and discover proven strategies on apartment investing that actually work. To learn more about Wheelbarrow Profits, visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. Now to your hosts, Jake and Gino. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Stenziano, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barbaro. Gino, how's it going? Mr. Stenziano, how are we doing? Always making it happen, big man. That's Today's guest is Noah St. John. Noah is a best-selling author who's famous for inventing affirmations and helping busy people achieve financial freedom. As the leading authority on how to eliminate limiting beliefs, Noah delivers live programs and online courses that his coaching clients call mandatory for anyone who wants to succeed in life and business. So without further ado, Noah, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm honored to be here. It's, Thanks, it's Noah. It's our pleasure to have you here. And I just want to give a little disclaimer real quick because you know I didn't do the questions for today. And this is typically uh, a PG, PG-13 show. So just a quick disclaimer on this first one. And uh, let's just get into it. So, <laughs> so, so tell us about your background. And this part's clean. And you know your aha moment in the shower. I'm not sure where this, this one's going, but uh, you, you take it, Noah. <laughs> well... Well, first of all, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, I discovered this new technology of the mind that I call affirmations, not affirmations, oh. but affirmations. OK, so it, this is a new word for most of your listeners here. Um, and so basically, just to give you a very brief background. Um, I've been reading self-help books since I was a little kid. I grew up poor in a rich neighborhood, so really wanted to learn how to succeed, what are the secrets of success, and just voraciously read all of these books. But, um, you know, I tried to put them in practice, tried to do them, but they really didn't work for me. I was very frustrated and not successful. At age 25, I was suicidal and, you know, just a lot of stuff that went on. And then by the age of 30, I found myself divorced and uh, living in this tiny little dorm room. I went back to college at the age of uh, 28 and living in this tiny dorm room and I had $800 to my name. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? I've been reading all these books. I've been doing everything they told me to do. And why is my life not working out? And it was very, very frustrating. And uh, in fact, I remember one night I was sitting there just very frustrated and I was looking around my little dorm room and I had all these little pieces of paper that I'd written all these statements on. Like, I am happy, I am wealthy, I am rich, I'm successful. And why had I done that? Well, because every book tells you to do that, right? They tell you to write these affirmations or statements. I'd done exactly what they told me to do and, and it just wasn't working. So I was very frustrated. Well, the next morning I got in the shower. This was April 1997. Now, I'm sure we've all had those aha moments in the shower, right? Guilty. So, you know, I just, I'm just being funny here. So. <laughs> right, right. And so the point is, in the, in the book of affirmations, I call it the shower that changed everything. Because on this particular morning, this particular shower, I was thinking about all these things. Why am I doing all these things they told me to do, following all the steps, and it's not working, and what's missing? And I started to think about what is human thought? What is a belief? And I realized that human thought is really the process of asking and searching for answers to questions. For example, if I say, why is the sky blue? Your brain automatically goes, hmm, I don't know, why is the sky blue? And you start to search for the answer, right? So I said, if the human brain is automatically searching for answers to questions, why are we going around making statements we don't believe? Why don't we just cut out the middleman? And I said, I don't know, well, what would that look like? Well, let's see, you've got the statement. So we take a classic statement. Like I do this at my live events, guys, and, and people just, they love it because I go, all right, so we're gonna, everybody stand up and we're gonna say this affirmation, ready? I am rich. And everybody goes, I am rich. And you know what happens next? Everybody starts laughing. They, they start, they laugh. And I go, what are you laughing at? They go, well, I'm not rich. Yeah, but you just said you were. Yeah, but I don't believe it, right? And so the point is, it's not that the statement's wrong. It's just we don't believe the statement. And so they told us, the traditional teachers said, well, just repeat it a thousand million billion kajillion times until you believe it someday. And hey, for some people that worked. But for millions of us, like me, it didn't work at all. In fact, we ended up more frustrated. So I said, what would the question be? If the, if the human mind is automatically searching for answers to questions, what would, the, what would the question be that could change our lives? And I started to think about it and I said, if the statement is I am rich, 
And then your brain says, yeah, right. I call that the yeah, right response. What would the question be? Why am I so rich? Why am I so rich? Now, when you ask that question, what immediately happens in your brain? Your brain starts to search for the answer, right? So uh, we all know about the law of sowing and reaping. As you sow, so shall you reap. But what are we sowing? We're sowing seeds of thought. But what are most people doing? Sowing lousy thought seeds. Why am I so broke? Why am I so fat? Why can't I make more money? Why, why isn't my business growing? Why is there more month left at the end of the money? Right? You ask lousy questions, what do you get? Lousy answers, right? Yeah. And so that creates a lousy life. So I said, what if instead of asking lousy questions that lead to lousy answers and create a lousy life, what if we just flip the whole thing on its head, start asking empowering questions that lead to phenomenal answers and create a wonderful life? And as I was standing there in the shower, April 1997, I said, holy cow, I think I just invented something. <laughs> and so I had to give it a name. I knew that I had just invented something that could really change a lot of lives, just literally standing there in the shower thinking about this. And so I ran to my computer, I wrote everything down, and I came up with this word called affirmations, A-F-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S, affirmations. And now, fast forward all these years later, I've written um, you know, a dozen books. We have the book of affirmations from Hay House. Uh, it's in the fourth edition. We've got literally hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of stories of people who changed their lives using affirmations, we call it the affirmations revolution, and we got literally over 100,000 affirmers worldwide. Affirmers are people who, you know, use affirmations to change their lives. You know, it's funny, Noah, Jake and I uh, ran up against this a few months ago. Um, we always think about thinking big, right? So we've came across this deal. It's, it's not even in our league. It's the kind of deal you want to put together where you get a pit in your stomach and you get nauseous and you're like, there's no way. But I think subconsciously, Jake and I, is how can we do this? Why can we take this deal down? I think that's what we ended up doing. And, you know, having that partnership and that ability to speak to someone else, that mastermind, we actually put in a bid. We had no business doing this. And now we're back in the game again. So we're using affirmations subconsciously. So I think it's really powerful. I, I met you and I heard you years ago using it. And I think the affirmation, that is just an amazing thing. Because we're going to get into empowering questions and disempowering questions. I think that's truly important. But anybody hearing this, I think they need to work on themselves. Listen to know it's 80% psychological and 20% mechanical. So you're here to listen to multifamily. But this show is really powerful for any life coaches, any business coaches, any entrepreneurs who want to take it to the next level. I'm really excited, as you can see. I don't really talk that much on these podcasts, but I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. I want to share this knowledge with Noah. He's talking about traditional self-help programs. Any other reasons why you think they fail? I mean, you, you, you nailed a really big one. But are there any other, I guess, girls in the room? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of elephants in the room. So basically, um, I talk about that in my, another book of mine called The Secret Code of Success, which came out from Harper Collins. And then this is the book of affirmations from uh, Hay House. They're both mm -hmm. available on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. But basically, what I talk about is that in traditional success programs, they basically say four things. Set your goals, uh, you know, determine what you want, and then work really hard, and then try something else. Right. If it doesn't if, if at first you don't succeed, skydiving is probably not for you. I mean, that's that's basically what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So the problem with that, the problem with that is that most traditional self-help programs are talking about the how to's of success. Now, that's not wrong. But what I realized many years ago is that most people haven't given themselves permission to succeed in the first place. That's why the title of my first book was, in fact, called Permission to Succeed, because I realize it's not a, necessarily about how to succeed but how to let yourself succeed. So let me give you an example. When you're trying to change your life, you're trying to go from point A to point B, right? Let's say you wanna grow your business, you wanna make more money, you wanna lose weight, whatever your goal is, right? You're going from point A where you are to point B where you wanna be. It's kind of like driving in a car. Well, in a car, you've got two forces, the driving force and the restraining force. Driving force is the gas pedal, restraining force is the brake pedal, right? But see, what most people don't realize is that most people are unconsciously driving down the road of life with one foot on the brake. And so the point is that they're stopping themselves from success at the exact same moment that they're trying to drive themselves forward to success. So what the traditional success teachers say is set your goals, work hard, you know, uh, think positive. Again, those things aren't wrong. But what that is is saying, well, just step on the gas harder. My argument is, well, if you, if you have one foot on the brake and one on the gas, what if we just take your foot off the brake? Wouldn't that get you to your goals faster with a lot less effort? And the answer is yes, in fact, it does. In fact, I worked with a guy 
who uh, was a CEO of a software company, his company had been had been stuck at four million in revenues for the previous four years. Now, a lot of people would say, well, yeah, four million revenues, that's pretty awesome. But he was he'd been there for four years and couldn't go couldn't make any more. And he hired all these experts, all these gurus, everybody. Nothing was working. He came to me, he heard me at a seminar. He hired me as his coach in one year. I worked with him, and in that next year, his company went from being stuck at $4 million over the previous four years to over $16 million in revenues in one year. Now, that sounds impossible. It sounds incredible. Hey, you know, all I can tell you is these are real stories from real people, mm-hmm. and um, it's, it's really a result of getting your foot off the brake. So can you define to us what an affirmation is and how does it work? Absolutely. An affirmation is an empowering question that immediately changes your subconscious thought patterns from I can't to I can't, all right? So the default human belief is I can't do it because, right? And then we're, all of us are walking around with that. I can't do it because I'm too old. I can't do it because I don't have the right connections. I can't do it because I can't afford it. I can't do it because I wasn't born in the right place or whatever it is. What I realize, folks, is that you always make yourself right, right? We always make ourselves right. If you're saying I can't do it because, guess what? You're gonna find the reasons why you can't. So what an affirmation does is it literally changes your subconscious thought patterns from I can't to I can, or in fact, why can I? So it's really a a formulation of a question that's saying, for example, if you wanna say, I am enough, right? That's a classic, another classic affirmation. I am enough or I am good enough. But your brain may not believe that because of all this programming that we have. But if you ask it or a form an empowering question like, why am I enough? And what happens is your brain starts to search for well, why am I good enough? And then you start to list those things. And I, you know, I walk you through that process in the book. But basically, it's literally about changing your subconscious thought patterns using these empowering questions. That's awesome. Go ahead, Jake. I'm just curious on, on your thought, No, Where does desire come into all of this? Because I feel like there's some people that are just stuck in their ways, and they just don't even have they, – they're, they're comfortable answering their own questions, and they don't even want to grow or, or you know, make themselves better. So in your opinion, where does desire come into all this? Well, that's what I call the D-bar cycle, Jake. So that's a great question. And so, um, you know, I talk about that in the book also about the D-bar cycle. Now, D-bar stands for desire, belief, action, result. So this is, in fact, your life. Your <coughs> life is the D-bar cycle. I just broke it down in a way that I think people can understand. So the first step that happens is desire. You want something. We humans always want something, whether it's a new car, a new house, or a ham sandwich for lunch, right? I mean, we, we're always going after something we want from big to small. So that's the very first thing that happens. Now, those desires could be conscious. It could be subconscious. I mean, that's, there's a whole thing to that. But basically, everything starts with desire. The second thing that happens is a belief. That's the B. So what most people do is they say, well, okay, I want that thing, but I probably can't have it. Well, and that's what I was saying a moment ago. We're saying I can't do it because... Oh, well, I want to grow my business, but I can't do it because I'm too old. Or I can't do it because I don't have the money. I don't have the connections. I don't have the right mentor. Da, 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 right? And again, we always make ourselves right. So there's the belief. Then they have action. Now, let me just show you this. If you're believing I can't do it because, what are your actions going to be? Exactly. Zero. Nothing, mm-hmm. right? I mean, basically nothing or very, very little, right? Very, like, half-hearted. And so you're going to like, well... You're going to try it because, you remember, you just told me that you believe you can't do it. So, of course, your actions are going to be very half-hearted, right, or some other part of the anatomy. And then the R in D-bar is result. So let's just walk through it. You have a desire. You want the thing. You have a belief which says, I can't do it. I can't have it. Your action is very half-hearted. What do you think the result's going to be? Not much, right? Mm-hmm. So and then and then you get to be right. Isn't that beautiful? So we humans always make ourselves right. <laughs> See, I told you I couldn't do it. There you go. I wouldn't be surprised say, if eighty well, percent of people break down between the, the desire and the belief. Well, it's really it's really the belief itself. So yeah. that's one of the things that app formations does. Yes. So here's watch this. If we just change that one thing, just change the one thing, the belief. The desire doesn't move, right? The desire is still right. there. You still want the business, the house, the car, whatever it is, right? So that's fine. But it's the belief. What if we just could change your belief from I can't to I can, or even, this is what I tell my clients, even what if I could, what if I could have that thing? What if I could be that? What if I could grow my business? Just even that smidgen of a belief, you know, that mustard seed. Okay, 
Just that little, little belief, right? <laughs> and then what would your actions be if you were to believe that you could do it? Well, then you're going to take yep. more actions, right? You're yep. going to take, you're going to put yourself out there. You're going to, th- you know, uh, do more, right? And then the result. So when you d- have a desire, when you believe and you take action, you always get everything you want, right? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Right. That's the lousy, frustrating thing about life, gentlemen, and everybody listening, is that the point is we don't always get what we want. Right. I I tell the story in the book about my friend Jack Canfield, who wrote this book or had this idea for a book called Chicken Soup for the Soul. Right. And that was his desire. I desire. I want to publish a book. He had a belief that he could do it. He took action. He went to all these publishers. Right. He went to the first publisher. He said, hey, I want to do this book, Chicken Soup for the Soul. What do you think they said? Oh, of course, Jack. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> no. Uh-huh. Chicken Soup for the what? That's stupid. Slam. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating for effect, but you get the point. Well, I mean, we like, went through the same no, thing no. with our book, Wheelbarrow Profits. We had people tell us, that's the stupidest name I ever heard. You know? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. And so. So just to, to finish the story. Right. So how many how many do you think how many rejections do you think Jack got? Ten. 20, yeah, 30, 100, 50, 150, right? It was, it was 144. Yeah. 144 rejections said, 144 publishers. I didn't know there were 144 publishers. <laughs> I probably have business now. But the point is 144 rejections before he got one yes. Okay. Now, how many people do you think would have given up after 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, 120? I mean, are you kidding me? So do you understand, folks, the lesson here is that even if you have a desire, even if you believe, even if you take action, you don't always get what you want. That's what happens in life. So the point is, are you going to believe enough so that you keep going even when life hands you those lemons? And it's funny. That's what I referenced in the beginning of the show. We had no we had no business getting into this big deal. But our desires and our beliefs were we could actually do it because we've done it before. So we've actually been taking a lot of action since then. We've been getting no's from other people trying to raise money. We've been getting no's from the broker. But we're still pursuing it because I think we're in that loop. We're actually believing it. Am I speaking for you, Jake? Do you believe that or not? Right on. I, I think right on, G-Daddy. Right I, on. I think that's where it is. <laughs> Let's talk about the current perceived reality you talk about in the book, the new desired reality and that belief gap because this, is, I think, is really important. Absolutely. So when we're, when we're trying to reach our goals. So remember, my whole teaching is all about helping people reach their goals, whatever those goals are. Now, just, I mean, a lot of people talk about money and, you know, 77% of the people come to me to what their big goal is, hey, no, I want to make more money. So I've helped my clients add over a hundred million dollars just over these last few years. And when I say that, I mean, we've helped people add five figures to their business, six figures, seven figures. And yes, we've even helped people add eight figures like that story I just shared with you about that CEO, that company went from 4 million to 16 million in one year. So we've helped people add over $100 million. But it's not just money. It's about, uh, you know, gaining health, losing weight, finding love, you know, improving their marriages. Also, kids use affirmations about getting better grades, feeling better, feeling more confident. So I talk about money because honestly, you know, it's the number one frustration for most people. Uh, and so, but it's, it's a lot more than that. So the point is when you're trying to reach your goals, whatever they are, you're trying to go from what I call your CPR to your NDR. Now your CPR is stands for your current perceived reality. That means you are where you think you are and you are who you think you are and you are what you think you are, right? We all have this, what I call head trash, right? And the head trash, the typical head trash is, I can't do it because dot, dot, dot. And then you just fill in the blank. Like I said, I'm too old and, you know, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough, dot, 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 whatever. So that's your current perceived reality. Notice I say perceived reality because there is no reality. There's only perceived reality, right? And so that's a long story which we can get into, but, you know, I talk about that in the book. But anyway, my point is that's where you are. You are who and where and what you think you are. Now, over there, The thing that you want is what I call your new desired reality. That's like that D-bar cycle I just told you about. That's where I have the car. I have the house. I have the money. I have the whatever, right? The relationship, the health. That's where I want to be. Now, between your CPR, between your CPR and your NDR, there's a gap. That gap is what I call your belief gap. So for most of the people that I coach, for most of my coaching clients, my mastermind students, most of the people that I meet at my live events, that belief gap is where they're pouring all their money. They're pouring all their money into that, but they don't know they're doing that. So that's why when you go to our website and you look on the praise page, if you go to noahstjohn.com and just click on the button that says praise, 
you'll see story after story after story that's basically the same thing. Noah, I spent you know tens of thousands of dollars on all these gurus, all the big names out there, but I was still stuck. And then once I took your training and took your teaching, that's when I got unstuck for the very first time. I'll give you a quick example, guys. Uh, I had one student named Susan. She came to me from California. She had spent $60,000 on all those big name gurus, all the names you've heard of. She was not only $60,000 in debt, she was about to go bankrupt. She was about to lose her home. She was about to lose her marriage. Her husband said, I can't take this anymore. You're spending all this money. It's supposed to be helping us, but we're going down, not up. And oh, he was at the end of his rope. She was at the end of her rope. She was literally just about to give up. She actually heard me from a friend, heard about me from a friend. She uh, you know, joined my program. She took basically all of my online programs. In that, in the next six months, just by helping her to understand her you know, CPR, her NDR, and her belief gap and taking these steps, she went from being $60,000 in debt. She landed her dream job. She's now earning a six-figure income. She has been nominated for an Emmy twice. She's an Emmy-nominated TV producer. And get this, she's just published her first book. So all of that happened because she learned how to change her beliefs from I can to I, I can't to I can. That's awesome. Let's circle back and talk about empowering and disempowering questions because those are important. That's like one of the root things I think you talk about in the book. Absolutely. So let's take a typical person's head, right? A typical average person's head is filled with what I call disempowering questions. So those would be things like, why am I so stupid? Why am I so fat? Why can't I make more money? Why isn't my business growing? Why can't I get a date on Friday night, right? And so that was what my head sounded like before I discovered app formations. That's why I'm very mm -hmm. familiar with all these disempowering questions, right? Lots of head trash. And so that's the average person. So guess what? When you ask a question, your brain searches for the answer. So if you're asking something like, why am I, wh why can't I make any money? Or why am I so broke? Guess what? You're going to find the answer. Well, I'm so broke because I'm stupid. I'm so broke because uh, I don't have the right education. I'm so broke because I don't have the right mentor. I'm so broke. You see what I mean? You're going to mm -hmm. literally find the answer. Your brain is doing this. Now, you may be doing this consciously. And you may not, but it doesn't matter whether you're doing it consciously or subconsciously, you're still sowing those seeds that I talked about earlier. So what I teach in the book of affirmations and in all my teachings and, uh, you know, my online programs and so forth and my live events, I say, listen, what if we were to just take those disempowering questions and switch them to empowering questions? And people go, well, what would that look like? Well, let's say, why am I so broke? That's a disempowering question. I think everybody would agree with that, right? I mean, you're going to get, as you sow, so shall you reap. Who wants to be broke? That would be nobody. So what do we want? You could say, why am I so rich? Why am I so rich? Now, your brain's going to go, what? You know, at first, it's going to go, I don't, that doesn't compute, right? But what, when you walk through the steps of the affirmations method, one of the things that you do is I, I counsel people to, I call it, give yourself to the question. Meaning, I, I encourage you to read, write, say, and listen to your affirmations. Read them, meaning read them in the book. In the book, we've got over 400 different affirmations in all 10 major areas of life. You can just read them. You can write your own um, so that you, you know, read your specific ones for your situation. Um, you also can uh, say them out loud. We have like couples. We have kids who say affirmations. Um, and, you know, people say them out loud to themselves and then also listening to your affirmations. We have two different programs. We were talking about that earlier uh, before the show, which is we have done for you affirmations recordings called I Aform Audios that you can listen to throughout the day. And in fact, you can be doing something else. You can literally change your brain while you're not even paying attention. You can be watching TV. You can be exercising people, even do it in their sleep. And it's changing their subconscious thought patterns from negative to positive. And then we also have something called a formware. Uh, which is something that you can record your own affirmations in your own voice and actually put your own customized music to them. So whether you use iform audios or a formware, you can actually do this process to change your subconscious thought patterns from and change your questions from disempowering to empowering. All of this is available on our website at noahstjohn.com. The point is to change your disempowering thought processes and disempowering questions to empowering questions, and then you actually have the power to act. That's what empowering means. It literally means having the power to take action. 
I would recommend everybody doing that in the morning. I recorded mine. I have five minutes. So if you're a down and out or you've got a lot of head trash, wake up in the morning, listen to them five minutes, you get your day started. And then before you go to bed, put it on for five minutes. So your thoughts that you're thinking about before you go to bed, you'll be thinking about it all. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll feel refreshed and you'll be thinking about, you know, how can I make more money instead of why am I broke? So it, I think that's really powerful. You talk about the four steps of um, the affirmations. Can you talk about those four steps for us? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the four steps of the affirmations method basically comes down to four A's, four <laughs> words that begin with the letter A. The first is to ask yourself what you want. What is it that you want to manifest? I've been talking about this, you know, this, this whole time. Everything starts with desire. So what do you want? In the book, I talk about the 10 major areas of life. And I walk you through those everywhere from health and, um, you know, fitness goals to money and abundance to uh, overcoming fear to spirituality, life, happiness, relationships. I mean, just really the 10 major areas of life. So write down, you know, exactly what it is you want. That's the at. That's the first day. The second day is to a form. So once you know what you want, then you form and you ask an empowering question that assumes that what you want is already so. So, for example, like I was saying a moment ago, it's, you might say, well, I want to make more money. So you might say, why is it so easy for me to make more money? Why am I good enough? Why is it so easy for me to lose weight? And so on and so on. So, again, for all those different areas. The third A is to accept. You want to accept the fact that these questions are now true. You have to, you have to give yourself to the question and you have to plant those seeds. This isn't magic, right? It's science. And so it's not going to just... You say, why am I so rich? And then a million dollars shows up in your bank account. It doesn't work that way, right? This, we're still dealing with reality. We're still dealing with real, real life. But my point is that everyone on the earth is already doing this. They're just most humans are doing this in a very disempowering way. And so the point is now that we can do it consciously using the affirmations method, you can literally change your brain and change your life in less than five minutes a day, like you said, Gino. And then the fourth A is to, and this is the one that many, many people forget, and this is the one that's the most uncomfortable that people want to, you know, ignore or, or just not do, but the fourth A is to act. You must take action. I, I you know, I talk about building your business or, or whatever it is that you want to do. It's kind of like building a house, right? A, a house doesn't just get built magically because you want a house, right? You say, oh, I want a house. And then it just shows up. No, that's what they told us in the secret, right? In the secret, they said, oh, just think about money and money pours in from the ceiling. No, it doesn't. I don't know what planet that works on, but it's not the planet Earth. The point is on the planet Earth, we have to do this annoying thing called work. And that's where most people stop. They go, oh, I just want it magically. Well, that's called wishful thinking. It doesn't work that way. All the successful people that you see from Richard Branson to Mark Cuban to, uh, you know, Bill Gates and anybody, they took action, right? They had these you know, they, they basically did what I'm teaching you, but they did it unconsciously. So, you know, it took a nerd like me to be able to break these steps down so that the rest of us can do what the highly successful people do unconsciously. And then the rest of us now can do it consciously. Do we you compare this to exercise in any way? Because it sounds like, to me, this is a lot almost like mind training. Is that fair? Oh, I think it's very fair. And, and I do, in fact, say that this is like building a muscle because, um, you know, at, at the beginning of any exercise program, you know, your muscles tend to be weak uh, because you haven't used them. And so if you're used to asking disempowering questions. Most people are right. Why am I so broke? Why am I so dumb? Why am I so stupid? And so forth. You know, you're not doing that on purpose. No, you know, nobody we had to be trained to think and, and ask these disempowering questions. And so my point is now we need to be retrained to ask these empowering questions. Is that going to take effort? Yes. And certainly at the beginning of any exercise program or any different type of, you know, life changing program at the beginning is always where it's usually the hardest because you're, you're trying a new habit. You're, you're trying a new thing. And so my point is, if you stick with it, um, it really becomes much, much easier. And then, of course, we have all this online training that's available for the folks um, you know, at home and there are folks listening. Uh, so, you know, I've done the heavy lifting so that you don't have to. Let's jump into the two types of habits. You talk about the two types of habits in your book. Absolutely. And so most people, when they think about habits, right? So I talk a lot, like I have a program called Power Habits Academy, where I teach the the power habits of unconsciously successful people, the people like the Mark Cubans, the Richard Bransons, the, you know, Warren Buffetts and so forth. They're unconsciously competent at allowing themselves to succeed, which means 
they can't actually teach what they're doing. They're unconscious. But, you know, that's great for them. But what about the rest of us? That's one of the reasons why so many people have spent tens of thousands of dollars on all the big names and all the gurus. And they're still stuck before coming to me. They come to me and I walk them through this process uh, of how to become a natural of success, but how to do it consciously. And that's why we see these incredible results like $4 million to $16 million or $60,000 in debt to a six-figure income. And I mean, and it happens very quickly. And um, again, you can just go to the praise page on noahstjohn.com and see dozens and dozens. I mean, that's just a fraction of what we've got. But basically, the two types of habits are, and most people think when they think of habits, they think of good and bad, right? There's good habits and there's bad habits. I'm not going to say that's wrong, but what I'm going to say is that that doesn't really help, right? For most most people, when you when you label something good and bad, it it sort of just puts the brakes on. You know, it's talking about you know driving down the road of life with one foot on the brake. That sort of doesn't really help people. So what what we teach on our campus at SuccessClinic.com, we teach two types of habits are productive and unproductive. All right, so productive habits means they're habits that are bringing you towards your goal. Remember, everything starts with the desire, that D-bar cycle I told you about earlier. So when you're looking at your desire, whether it's more money, more, you know, building your business, more clients and, or whatever it is, you have habits that are bringing you towards that goal. And then you have habits that are bringing you away from that goal. So the ones that bring you towards are what we call productive. The ones that bring you away are unproductive. A great example of this is procrastination. Or procrastinating. About 80% of the hands go up, and then the rest are waiting until later to answer the question. A little procrastination joke. But anyway, my <laughs> point is that that's, procrastination is affecting so many people, I mean, millions and millions of people. Now, I think we'd all agree that procrastination is an unproductive habit, right? It's clearly something that is not bringing you towards your goal, right? Procrastination is the thief of time. And time is the most valuable resource because it is the one resource we can't renew. The other, the other resources are money and energy. Well, money can be renewed and energy can be renewed, but time cannot. Time, all of Bill Gates' billions can't buy one minute of yesterday. So the point is that when you look at a habit like procrastination, it's pretty obvious that's an unproductive habit. That's why one of the things that, that's one of the big complaints that people come to me with is, Noah, how do I stop procrastinating? And that also comes uh, or is very involved with this whole uh, issue of overwhelm, right? So many people are on overwhelm or information overload, right? There is, in fact, too much information out there. I argue that we don't live in the information age. We live in the information overload age. We passed the information age about 20 miles back. We are all on overload. And that's why one of the things that we have to do in terms of a habit, a productive habit, is to learn how to focus, learn how to eliminate distractions. I tell the story about how I wrote two books in 90 days. It just so happens that I'm the only author in history who's had works published by Hay House, HarperCollins, Vine Valley, Nightingale, Conan, and the Chicken Soup for the Soul publisher. No one else has ever done that. Well, it just so happens that I got the contracts for Hay House and Nightingale Conan in the same 90-day period. And I was so excited because this was a lifelong dream of mine. And I signed the contracts. And right after I signed the contracts, of course, I was so excited. And I read the fine print. And I was like, uh-oh, I have to write two books in 90 days. I just signed that con- I signed two contracts. And that, they're both due. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Well, the point is I said to my wife, honey, you're not going to see me for about you know 90 days or so. But I kind of locked myself in the room. And I was able to pump out those books. How did I do it? Basically, the most important thing that I did was to eliminate distractions. So there's so many people saying, oh, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. And then you look at their daily habits and they are actually distracting themselves. So that's why, for example, the focusing is such an important productive habit that you need to start doing. That's awesome. You've been doing this for about 20 years. You've been teaching. How how has your teaching evolved over these last 20 years? Well, that's actually a great question. Um, when I when I discovered Affirmations in the shower in April 1997, and then I discovered Success Anorexia in October of 1997. So 1997 was really my my year of epiphanies. So you no, know, it is. It's 20 years later now, and I started teaching it right away um, when I realized that this really these two things really were the missing elements in uh, traditional success literature, personal growth programs, if you want. And um, I realized that I just basically sat down at my computer and I just asked God, what, what do you want me to say here? You know, what, what is the answer? And so I just wrote my, so exa- for example, my first book, which is called Permission to Succeed, I wrote that book in two weeks. 
Um, it was just like a download from the universe. And in fact, I wrote, I wrote it in five days, took four days off, and then I edited it for five days. So that's a total of 14 days, which is two weeks. So the point is that when I wrote that first book, I just, I knew that I was right, but I didn't have any proof that I was right, right? I just sort of knew it. You ever have that feeling you just, you just know in your gut that something's right, yep. even though you can't prove it? Well, that's what it was for me. I was very fortunate that I met Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup for the Soul. I met him in 1990, uh, 1998 and was, um, he loved my book, which was self-published at that time. Now, this is a long time ago, long before Kindle or all the stuff we have now, print on demand, way before that. But my point is that he, you know, looked at that book and loved it and sent it to the Chicken Soup publisher. And eight weeks later, um, I, you know, the chicken, the, the owner of the Chicken Soup uh, friend, you know, publisher called me and said, hey, no, we'd like to publish your book. So basically, that very first book was just me knowing that it was right, but not having any proof that it was right. So now, all these years later, we have literally thousands and thousands of, of case studies, success stories from kids, CEOs, moms, um, you know, people in the military, athletes, celebrities. I mean, it's just the list goes on and on. So now it's unassailable proof that, yes, it does work. So sometimes you do. You just have to you just have to believe you just have to go out and, and take those risks. And, uh, you know, for, for me, it's uh, paid off. What is your best self tell self help tip for the listeners? Well, it really comes down to five words. It really comes down to five words that really have changed my life and have changed a lot of lives around the world over these last 20 years. And my best self tip that I really could ever give people is the five words, those five words that have changed my life, which is give yourself permission to succeed. When you give yourself permission to succeed, well, let me say it this way. When you don't give yourself permission to succeed, you will be driving down the road of life with one foot on the brake. Now, nobody does that on purpose. Nobody wants to stop themselves from success, but it doesn't matter. You're sowing those seeds anyway, and just because of the law of sowing and reaping, you will be holding yourself back through no fault of your own. So once you learn the steps to give yourself permission to succeed, you very simply get your foot off the brake. And then, you know, just like the clients and the stories that I've shared with you and many more, then you can actually just go to success so much more easily, so much more quickly, and with so much less effort and less stress. And everything becomes so much easier. And that's why that that is my my best self-help tip. I, I like that because I think a lot of people don't realize that they're really trying to protect themselves. We're, we're programmed to protect ourselves from hurting ourselves. Instead of asking those quality questions, we're saying to ourselves, well, I don't want to try because I might fail. And then, you know, that fear of failure is what's really holding us back. So I think a lot of what you talk, what you talk and what you teach about is really resonates with me because I figured once I said to myself, I don't want a small business. I want a big business and I want to take chances. I don't care if I get hurt because I don't, how am I going to actually get hurt? If I lose money, I'll find another way to make money. So to me, this has been, this has been awesome. I could talk for hours and hours and hours about this stuff. This has been really empowering for me. So, um, Jake, take it away, bro. Sure. I keep talking about it. I'll let you so, take it away. Yeah, we, we talked about habits a minute ago. What is your <clears throat> best habit for success? I would say my personal best habit is the ability to focus. And I've always had that ability. So for me, it is somewhat natural. And I will say this, is that most distractions at this point in time, at this moment in history, are self-imposed distractions. Right. So a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, I'm overwhelmed. Oh, I'm procrastinating. Oh, I can't focus. And then I walk through them, you know, my clients and my mastermind students, I, I, I literally walk through their day, a typical day for them. And they really have no clue of how many times they're distracting themselves. OK. And I go, do you understand that all of this or at least a great portion of it is self-imposed? Like, for example, Facebook, the greatest distraction of all, right? I mean, how many times are we, you know, we're working on a thing and then you just sort of maybe you get to a stuck point or you're writing a report or a, an article or maybe even writing your book and you get stuck. You're like, oh man, I don't. well, let's see what's going on on Facebook, right? I mean, oh my God. I mean, so we, again, we don't live in the information age. We live in the information overload age. I would also argue we live in the distraction age. We are all distracted. And recent studies showed that we humans or the average person, American, I guess, has a smaller or shorter attention span than the average goldfish. I don't know where that study came from, but that's what I'm reading. So my point is, hello, I mean, if you're going to have less of an attention span than a goldfish, 
you're certainly not going to get a lot done. The highly successful people that I've coached and that I've worked with and that I've studied definitely have that ability to focus and to eliminate distractions so that you get your work done. You put your work out there in the universe and then the distractions just fade away. So are you helping people become more self-aware? Well, I, I think that's one of the benefits of it. I think that's one of the benefits of doing this work of, you know, using affirmations, giving yourself permission to succeed, following the power habit system. Self-awareness is definitely part of it. A lot of teachers out there are espousing self-awareness as the thing. I argue that, well, no, that's actually just a benefit of doing it right. You know, you can't you can't like become self-aware, at least in the way that they're saying it. That's what I've seen. You know, how do you just be aware? I think you have to change your habits. And that starts with changing your thinking, which in, in my book anyway, starts with changing your questions from disempowering to empowering. And then because let's just be very honest. If you say, well, why am I so stupid? And you become self-aware, you're aware that you're stupid. Great. What good is that? You see what I mean? You just, yep. you just shot yourself in the foot. You say, well, I told you I was stupid. Uh, wait a minute. I guess I was looking <laughs> that more at the, the, how's that help? the actual. You know I mean? I'd rather say, wait a minute. Why don't we say, instead of why am I so stupid, why am I good enough? Yeah. Why am I enough? Why am I so smart? Oh, then I can be aware of the fact that, wait a minute, all of this bullshit that I've been saying to myself, those are all lies. That's head trash. What if I get rid of, you see what I'm saying? Yep. So to become self-aware when you have head trash is actually the worst thing you could possibly I think, do. I think you're saying this, that you're, you're actually putting the, the self-development first. You're kind of working on that first, and then you're, then you're okay, then now I'm realizing, I'm, I'm, now I'm okay. I'm, I'm training my mind. Now I realize I'm on Facebook 12 hours a day. Let's cut that. You know, so it's, it, I think it's you know, putting one before the other and then you know, working, you know, working on uh, better development. Um, yep. What is your biggest mistake that you've made since you've been in business? Well... Unfortunately, I've made this mistake several times uh, before I learned, and it's uh, really not trusting myself and trusting other people more than me and thinking other people were smarter than me. And so not, not that I know everything, because of course I don't. But what I'm saying is I, because of the way I was raised, that I'm not enough and that I am stupid and that nothing I do is ever good enough, that's taken me decades to overcome that head trash. And so in that process, I would give money to very slick salesmen, very great marketers, really, you know, persuasive guys, you know, who said, hey, you know, I'll do this and this and this for you. I go, OK. And then I give them lots of money and then they disappear. So it's like, shit, <laughs> that really sucked. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I made that mistake several times before I woke up to the fact that why am I giving money to these idiots when I can do it myself? You know, when I'm perfectly capable of doing the things. Certainly not suggesting that anybody, you know, or that I know everything or can do everything. I mean, I certainly have a team, you know, I have assistants and so forth, you know, to help me and we should have a team. But the point is, who is on your team? Who is on your team is so, such a crucial thing um, that, you know, trusting and, and being with the right people as opposed to those, you know, those slick salesmen, those clever marketers who are really great, very persuasive, you know, great with the mouth, but really lousy with follow-up. So unfortunately, that cost me a lot of money before I woke up to that fact. But, you know, now, now, now we basically have everything in-house. And, uh, we're, you know, we're very self-contained here at successclinic.com, which is nice because now we can offer these programs to our clients, you know, like people who come to us and they want their websites built or they want help with their sales funnels or things like that. So, we don't just uh, teach on inner game. We also help people with outer game. Inner game is, you know, the stuff that happens between your ears. The outer game is the sales, the, the marketing funnels and so forth, you know, uh, websites, all those things that are, are market facing. And so now what's really nice is we're able to do both for our clients. Uh, what, what's your favorite book, uh, favorite business book? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I actually have two favorite books, if I, if I may. So uh, my first one was really the, the, the book that inspired me many years ago when I was just a kid, which is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, you know, classic self-help, the classic self-help book. And, um, you know, I read that, believe it or not, before I was 10 years old. Most people don't believe that, but it's true. I just it was sitting there in my father's library and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting title. How to win friends and influence people. I'd like to learn that. So I read it. and You know, it really uh, it really affected me a lot. And then the second one was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Dr. Stephen Covey. 
And Dr. Covey was really my inspiration for getting into this industry because I, I actually heard that book on audio tape, believe it or not, it was an audio yep. tape that many years ago. And um, I, I remember listening to that tape four times in a row and I was just crying, tears were running down my face as I was listening to that because I realized I had been doing the seven habits of highly ineffective people my whole life. And so- Maybe that's your next was book. One of the great, yeah, right. <laughs> when it was one of the, I could write that one in five minutes. So, <laughs> But my point is that uh, uh, I, I actually, he, he inspired me so much that I actually um, went back to college, like I was saying earlier, and I was uh, studying religious studies, which is what he studied in college. I mean, I, I, you know, I researched him. Being a nerd, I you know, researched him. I was very consciously following in his footsteps. Well, I got to actually interview Dr. Covey uh, twice before he sadly passed away. And um, I, that was really one of, the, one of the honors of my life was to interview Dr. Covey and had 20 uninterrupted minutes with him on the telephone, you know, just me, just this kid, you know, from nowhere. And he took 20 minutes with me on the phone. And he was he was such an inspiration. He was exactly what you would want Stephen Covey to be. He was warm. He was brilliant. He was humble and he was wise. And he said one thing that I never forgot that I, I, I always like to say this whenever I get the opportunity. And uh, he said, uh, you know, I asked him, I said, what do you do when people like worship you when they, you know, just think you're the greatest thing in the world? And because um, I wanted to be a speaker, at, you know, this was before I ever wrote any books or anything like that when I when I interviewed him. And he said something that I always remembered. And he said, no, I want people to leave my events more impressed with themselves than with me. And I said, now that is brilliant. And see, today where we are, um, you know, in in um, in life and on the Internet, we have all these people that say, you know, here's my car. here Here's my house. Here's my garage. Here's all my you know, Rolexes and so forth. And that is where marketing really is right now. Uh, unfortunately, I think in this industry, it's sad, but that's what everybody worships is, oh, wow, look at all that stuff. When I, when I try to, you know, when I remember what Dr. Covey said, I want people more impressed with themselves than with me. That's why I market very differently. I'm like, listen, you all, everybody has more power in them than you think. You have been stopping yourself from the success you're perfectly capable of only because you're driving down the road of life with one foot on the brake. Why is that? Because you're saddled with all this head trash. If we get rid of your head trash, you're going to accomplish things that you can't even believe, like going from $60,000 in debt to a six-figure income or, or you know, from $5,000 a month to $75,000 a month. And I mean, just all these real stories that we've had from around the world. And so the point is, I, I really seek to or, or hope to carry on Dr. Covey's legacy and leave people more impressed with themselves than with me. He sounds like before, a yeah, very authentic guy. That's a great story. Jake, before you do the wrap-up and everything, I just want people, first thing they do is get off this uh, podcast, go on our website. I wrote a book review of uh, Noah's book. Short, 400 words. Um, after you do that, I know you're going to buy the book. Go on Amazon. There's a link to buy the book. It's going to change your life. It's the first step you have to do. Remember the D-bar? You have to take actions. You're going to believe. I'm going to make you believe it's a great book. It is a great book. It's really inexpensive. I don't know why he's selling it for so cheap, but uh, maybe we'll talk about it after we get off the phone. But read this. Read the book review. You'll love, you'll love what I wrote about it. You'll love this podcast. You'll say, I got to get this book. After you do that, buy the book. After you do that, go on his website, check it out, and start doing affirmations. Right, Jake. I'll let you finish it up. I just want no, to. No, I think plug. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up with one single thing. And and I had my in the shower aha moment today, and that was when we started talking about the D bar, and then w with the breakdown over the belief, because you know it, once people get to that point, it's almost like they're, they're running into a wall. I think, and uh, and that really was uh, was an eye opening moment for me on on the, on the show today. So I think that was really uh, really impactful. I think you're a really inspiring guy, and um, just you know, thank you for your time. Can you you know tell listeners the best way to get a hold of you and and any um, any other you know offers that you may have out there? Yes, absolutely. Um, easiest way is noahstjohn.com. That's my name. So n o a h s t j o h n dot com. And actually, when you go to our website, you can actually download my new book. It's called Get Rid of Your Head Trash, and it's absolutely free. So just go to noahstjohn.com and just uh, put your name and email in there. We'll send you my new book called Get Rid of Your Head Trash. Uh, and it's really, I walk you through the, the five steps to get rid of your head trash absolutely free. So uh, that's all there at NoahStJohn.com. So, so Noah, we put a lot of um, you know, different infographics and memes out there on Instagram and Facebook. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going we're gonna to get you out there tomorrow. So I have permission to succeed would be like you know, Noah St. John 1.0. How do we make that a real affirmation? What are, we, what are we putting out there tomorrow on Instagram? Is it 
<laughs> why do I have permission to succeed? You got you got to help me out here. That would be it. Yes. That would be it. Why do I have permission to succeed? And then you just, you know, Affirmations by Noah St. John. And in fact, and by the way, you can go to Affirmations.com too and learn more about the Affirmation system. And um, uh, But yeah, that, that's what I would do. You're, you're, why, you're, why do you're I have going, You're going out there tomorrow. We're putting you out there. It's going to be nice, <laughs> nice info grab. Awesome. Sorry, Noah. So cool. Appreciate Guys, it. thanks so much for the time. Great show today. And uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, Noah. I appreciate it. My pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you. We trust that you enjoy the Wheelbarrow Profits podcast. Visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. See you next time when Jake and Gino share more of their investing secrets with you.